Hello, I'm Josh Sis, Executive Director at the Potawatomi Zoo, and today we have a special treat for you. I say they're always special, but they are special. We're actually going to meet the Southern Ground Hornbills. This is a species that's been pretty iconic with the Potawatomi Zoo. We've had these guys for many, many years. We've raised a lot of hornbill chicks, and today I'm going to introduce you to their keeper, and we're going to talk a little bit about the care that goes into these guys and give you a little behind the sneak peek scenes of uh, what, what it takes to care for these guys. All right, so I'm here with Erin. Erin is our keeper of Hornbill. She's been involved in their care for many years, and she's actually been involved in hand raising some of the chicks. Erin, what do we have here? Uh, so we have our Southern Ground Hornbill group here. Um, right now, there's three individuals. You can see Seymour. Um, he's our second youngest. He's the youngest of this group, though. He's the one on top of the nest box there. He's not as red. Uh, Timmy is the male you can see in the box. That is actually our breeding male. So he's the dad of the several that have been hatched here in the last um, several years. And then actually behind him, I don't know that you can really see her right now, she's the most shy of the group, is Jenny. And she's kind of back in that other part of the nest box. Um, so she is our breeding female. So when you talk about a nest box, what are you talking, what is that box? Um, these guys are actually uh, what are called like cavity nesters. So in the wild they will nest like back in trees, um, in holes in trees. So what we've done is kind of tried to emulate that. So we've built a box where they actually can go in and actually go around to the side so they can nest in privacy because they're not going to nest just on the ground or um, like they're too big to nest in branches like a lot of birds do. So we have to, if they didn't have a proper nest box, they probably wouldn't breed successfully. So that's the kind of the first step of uh, having a breeding pair. So you guys are, when you come to the zoo, you usually see these guys outdoors. Uh, this is actually their winter holding. Um, as temperatures get warmer, we'll actually s take these guys outside, but they've already started their nesting here inside. This is the time of year that we usually get eggs from these guys. And what we're going to show you here in a little bit is an a couple eggs, actually, we have in an incubator. And you're going to get the special treat of helping us candle them to see if they're viable, which means to see if there's chicks in them. But before that, Aaron, why don't you introduce us to one of your uh, hornbills that you've hand raised? Hi, so this is Dora. Um, she's actually one of the birds that's been hand raised here. She hatched out a little over three years ago. Um, she's a little bit of a special case. She hatched out really early and she's also had um, a broken wing and a few other issues. So she's a little more comfortable with us than most of our hornbills normally are. Uh, when we hand raise a bird, our goal is to eventually get them with a group and to be um, breeders when they grow up. So we don't want them to think they're people, basically. So we do, um, we want to avoid imprinting is what it's called. So when we're actually hand raising these guys, we try to keep talking to a minimum so they don't get used to our voices. Um, we'll actually use these hand puppets that look a little bit like the parents to try and get them used to what the parents look like. And we've even done, um, we'll take videos on a, of our phones of the parents vocalizing and we'll play that while we're feeding the chicks just to try and get them to know that they're hornbills. Um, and as soon as we're able, we'll start doing what we call howdies. We'll put them next to the hornbill exhibit where they're not together, but they can see and interact with the group. Um, when they're pretty young so that they can start getting used to the group and so hopefully we'll be able to successfully introduce them and they'll be able to go on to have chicks in the future. And like, uh, and like what Erin said, Dora's a special case. Uh, she was raised with a puppet. The goal was to keep her, um, you know, that she, she could go part, be part of the species survival plan. Um, but she did have an incident when she was younger. Um, you can see that she's kind of got a wing that's a little twerk. So she had a lot of uh, human interaction for her care um, and it really um, you know, it, it's, it's nice to see. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna treat you. Erin's uh, gonna take uh, Dora for a little walk around the zoo and let her see uh, the Learning Center. It's kind of a cool rainy day today, so yep. we'll probably stay inside. Um, but you're gonna see that she is very comfortable with her keepers. Uh, it's part of her enrichment. Um, but we just yep. wanna make it clear that this is not something we would normally do mm -hmm. with this species. Um, it just, you know, it, it kind of worked out with her because of her care. Yep. Um, all right, so Erin, let's, uh, let's take her to the Learning Center. All right.
Can you run this way? We are here with our hornbill aid. <laughs> so Erin, why don't you walk us through a little bit of your routine and what you do here. Okay. Um, so this is our incubator. Um, hornbill eggs need to be incubated about 35 to 41 or 42 days. Um, and it's really important to keep the humidity up and to keep the temperature really steady. So that's what this does. Um, so every day uh, we do have this thing that tilts the eggs back and forth because the parents would turn them every day. Um, and then we also turn them back and forth twice a day and that's also when we check humidity and temperature. Uh, what we're going to do right now is actually get them out and we're going to candle them to see if they're fertile. So we'll kind of see what we can see here. Um, I will have to turn off some lights so it's going to get a little bit dark in here. Um, we actually have two in here right now. We have an older one that we're pretty sure isn't doing well so I'll show you that one first. You actually can't really see too much in it. It's kind of empty. Um, normally if they're good you'd be able to see like veining and you'd be able to see a chick moving around at this point. You can kind of see just a loose yolk in there. So that one's probably not healthy. Um, it's actually if it was going to hatch, would be due to hatch within the next few days. And since we're not seeing anything, the chances of anything happening are uh, very, very low. Um, this one has looked good in the past. It's due to hatch in about a week and a half. But you can see, see all the veins in there. And you can actually see movement. But, yep, so that's the little chick in there. And then that's all the veining. You can actually see the chick moving around in the egg right now. That's pretty cool. Yep, see there's the leg and you can see the head up there. So it's kicking in there. Um, so hopefully this little guy will hatch some, uh, sometime between April 8th and 15th. So as soon yeah. as these guys hatch, then I'll go to our health center and our keepers like Aaron here will be responsible for raising these little guys. Yep. They are not easy to hand raise. Uh, these guys, when they hatch out, are what is called altricial. Um, it means that when they hatch out of the egg, they're basically, they cannot take care of themselves at all. So we have to hand feed every two hours uh, for the first few days and then from there, it takes them about 80 days, uh, 85 days to actually get out of the nest. So we hand feed them all the way up until that point. So it's a very long process and it's very involved, but it's extremely rewarding. <coughs> You're eating like a champ. <laughs> 